subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss any update. Hello everyone, so here I am to present lesson 2.5 of the series SSC CGL tier 2 paper discussion maths paper which was taken on December 1st 2016. In this lesson I will be discussing question number 1141 to 1150 and it is being presented by me. Let's read out question number 41. It says in an examination 73% candidates passed in quantitative aptitude, 70% passed in GS or general awareness and 64% passed in both. If 6300 students failed in both the subjects, the total number of examinees were essentially very easy questions. Let's work it out. It says we are talking about this value to be 73%, this value to be 70% and there is a common area which is 64%. This is for QA and this is for GA. Now we can easily see if this is 64%, overall is 73. You won't take even a second that this only QA will be 9%. Similarly here only GA will be 6%. Now what they are asking? They are simply saying that in total 6300 have failed in both the subjects. Now the simple story is that what this Venn diagram is representing. This particular Venn diagram is representing those students who are actually passing in any of the subject. That means whoever is represented in these Venn diagrams, they are those who have passed in at least one subject. Those who have failed in both, they have no place here because where you can represent them? Nowhere. So let's see what is the total here. 64 and 6 is 70 and 9 is 79%. You can clearly see that. Even if you would have been little more alert, you could even write this without taking the second difference. I mean just simply, you just think like that, that once you wrote this 64, and once you know this particular value will be 9 because total is 73. Then what is the total of this when? 70 plus 9 that is 79 percent. 79 percent are those students who are passing in at least one subject. Remaining will be definitely failing in both. So 21 percent have failed in both subjects which is equal to 6300 and not to say here that 1 percent will be equal to 300 then and then you know what is the answer. 100 percent that means total number of examinees are going to be 30,000. That's easily doable. There is no need to use the formula that you know NA and B and all. You just visualize and get the answer. Question number 42 talks about a man is spending 75% of his income and his income is increasing by 20%. His expenditure is also increasing by 10%. We have to tell what is the percentage increase in his saving. So if 75% of his income is his spending. So if I assume that he is having a total income of 4, then what is his expenditure? His expenditure will be 3, 3 fourth. His saving is going to be only 1. Now if his income is increasing by 20%, it will become equal to 4.8. And if his expenditure is changing by 10%, increasing by 10%, it will become equal to 3.3. Now you can clearly see his saving now must be 1.5 because even this relation will hold true. That expenditure plus saving will give you income. Now you can clearly see if 1 is becoming 1.5, this is a 50% change and you can easily mark the answer. Question number 43 now. Question number 43 says that on a river, Q is the midpoint between two points P and R on the same bank of the river. A boat can go from P to Q and back in 12 hours and from P to R in 16 hours 40 minutes. How long would it take to go from R to P? This is very easy if you just make the diagram here. You say Q is the midpoint between P and R. So if I say this is P and R, this is going to be Q and then it says a boat can go from P to Q and back in 12, 12 hours. So if I just represent it with the different colors, I think that will give a fair idea that it is going from P to Q and then back from you know Q to R. This total time is given to be 12 hours. Total time. Now what is given? And from P to R in 16 hours, 40 minutes. That means this forward journey has been provided if it goes till the till the R. That means this value is given to be a, to us as 16 hours and 40 minutes. How long would it take? to go from R to P that means the reverse journey. It's so simple. You just know one direction complete time taken. So if I say only half distance you know the time taken it will be half the time that means you will say 8 hours 20 minutes will be required while here the total time forward and backward was 12 hours you can clearly see the forward time from here to here will be 820. So it is going to be 340 then the reverse time will be 340. So if it is 340 then what will happen if you want to make this complete journey from R to P same direction it will be simply 340 and double of it. So 3 hours 40 minutes double of it will be clearly giving you 7 hours 
plus 20 minutes and let's see where that option is given look only one option is given which is between 7 and 8 that has to be correct anyway you can even think that 7 hours 20 minutes can be written as 7 1 by 3 because 1 by 3 is nothing but 20 minutes but you can easily do it if you just draw this diagram now let's talk about question number 44 question number 41 says a car can finish a certain journey in 10 hours at this particular speed in order to cover the same distance in 7 hours the speed of the car must be increased by the answer is going to be 18 let's see how you are going to do it there are two ways in which you can do it one is a b rule and the other is going to be directly using the product constancy what is the time taken 10 hours 42 km per hour so you should say that total distance will be 420 now you want the same distance to be covered in same hours 7 hours so you know that you need a speed of 60 then because distance is same so if you want a speed of 60 just see how much more than 42 it is it is 18 more than it you can directly mark it using a b rule also you can solve this question link is in description read the a b rule you will directly get the answer orally easy question i'm moving ahead now question number 45 says that a man is traveling 450 kilometers to his home partly by train and partly by car he takes 8 hours 40 minutes if he is traveling 240 kilometers by train and then remaining by car so 210 he will be traveling by car in this journey he is taking 8 hours and 40 minutes so this is 8 this is 40 minutes while he takes 20 minutes more if he is going to give 180 kilometer by train and the rest he is traveling by car so you can clearly see it is going to be 270 the time saved here I mean more time will be required that is 20 minutes extra will be required you can call it to be 9 hours now in this particular question right it's better to use the options to get the answer so how to use the option let's think about it now the simple story is if you look at the second case the total time that is required is 9 hours 840 and 20 9 hours so if 9 hours is the total time required you can easily find out that what is the average speed here it will be 50 km per hour why average speed because total 450 kilometers has been covered in 9 hours so that means in this case the average speed will be 50 km per hour here what will be average speed it will be little more than 50 km per hour because same distance covered in lesser time little more than 50 km per hour now i hope you all know the concept of average speed average speed can never be more than average speed or the highest speed of a component i mean if train is having certain speed car is having certain speed the average speed will be somewhere in between both speeds now from here we can also decipher one thing that when trains distance was decreased and cars distance was increased more time was required that means clearly the speed of the train will be more than the speed of the car then only that can happen now one thing is certain that we want a minimum average speed in given scenario to be 50 because in this case even more than that speed is there and also we know that the train's speed is more than the car's speed now it is very much clear it is only possible if a speed of car because we want average to be 50 or more than 50 now we know that one component then should be less than this and one should be more than this so clearly train will be more and car will be less now car is going to have a speed which is less than 50 what does that mean these two options are not possible I, you are left with two options that is 45 and 48 let's check out what is right any option you choose I think the better you choose 45 because 45 is going to give you certain divisibility here even if you choose 48 you can get the answer I'm not saying that but better choose 45 and let's check out if you choose 45 here you go here you give cars speed to be 45 what you are going to get here you are clearly going to get 6 here so if you get 6 years you would be willing you get 3 here to get 3 hours the train's speed will be 60 km per hour now once you get 6 hours here and 3 hours here and you know this speed is 45 this speed is 60 let's check out if this speed is 60 clearly here train will be taking 4 hours so you have to just check that are you getting 4 hours 40 minutes here or not that's what you have to find take 45 and 45 times 4 will give you 180 so that is 4 hours clearly plus 30 kilometers more so 30 kilometers more at what is speed 45 you can clearly see this is 2 by 3 hours and 2 by 3 hours is nothing but 40 minutes that means what you are getting the exact time that was required that means clearly that 45 minutes is the right answer you can easily do it and leave there are other ways also to do it but I don't think it is going to take more time it's such an easy question 45 48 and you can mentally then check out what will be right all right let's move ahead question number 46 now question number 46 says that a train b is speeding with 100 km per hour and it is crossing another train running in the same direction in two minutes and the length of the trains are given to be 150 and 250 
we have to find what is the speed of the train C. Orally, you can do it and get the answer 88. How? Just say it. First thing is that when overtaking means train is crossing another train, the length or distance covered here is sum of the length of the two trains. Clearly, the distance covered here is going to be 400 meters. Also, it is given that it is being crossed in two minutes. So, in two minutes, 400 meters distance is actually covered. I must say that then I have to find what distance in 60 minutes then. So, 60 minutes means you are multiplying by 30. If you multiply this particular value by 30, you are going to get 12,000 meters. I must say that it is one hour and I must say this is simply 12 kilometers. That means what the relative speed is 12 kilometer per hour. Once you have the relative speed and they're traveling in the same direction, if one value is 100, the other value must be 88 only. Okay, so that's how you are going to get that particular value. Question number 47. The compound interest on rupees 30,000 is 7% per annum for n years is 4347. Then what is the value of n? If I look at the options, I can immediately mark 2. Why I have done that? You clearly see this particular value 4347. Just see roughly how much percentage. It is little more than 14%. 30,000 is the base. 4347 is the interest. Just think about it. Roughly 14%, little more than that. Now just tell me please, out of the given values, if you take 3 n to be 3, the percentage even at simple interest will be how much? 21%. In simple interest, right, interest will be 21%. So 3 is not possible. And if 3 is not possible, what about 4 and 5? They are not at all going to be correct. Only possible answer which, which can be correct in this case will be second one that is 2 years. That is the only option. So if you look at the options, you call it CISI and whatever you want to, you love using formulas. But if you just use common sense and look at the answers, how easily you are able to solve the questions. Orally, you are doing it. And, you know, then only you can get, you know, 95 plus attempts in the paper or more than that. You had to think like that. Your accuracy will improve and using the options, make sure that you are going to get answer in the quick time. You won't waste your time as well. Question of 48. Now it says if A borrowed rupees P at X percent and B is borrowing rupees Q, which is more than P at Y percent per annum simple interest at the same time, we have to tell then the amount of their debt is going to be equal after how much time. Now let's see how we can do this question. This question can be done either traditionally or by assuming certain value. So let's see how we can do this particular question by assuming certain value. Q, P we are talking about. Let's think about first Q. I'm going to assume this Q to be maybe 100 and the standard, you know, I'm going to give it 10% interest. So after one year, this will become 110, 110%. Now I want the same 110 here, but one condition is given that, uh, you know, the value that you're going to assume for P should be less than Q. Let's say I'm going to assume it to be 50 only. I'm assuming it 50. You want to assume anything else? Like uh, you want to assume 10? There is no problem. You assume this particular value to be 10. Let's assume this value to be 10. Now, if you want to make this 10 to become 110, that is clearly 11 times. To make any value become 11 times, this is a 1000% increase. If you increase something by 1000%, you're going to get the value that will be 11 times. Using this actually what I have done here, your P is now 10, your X is 1000, your Q is 100, your Y is 10. Using this, I'm just going to check where I'm going to get the value to be 1 because I'm just saying this is the interest for one year, this is the interest for one year and I'm finding the values to be equal which are satisfying everything that is given in the question. Now let's check out where I'm going to get 100. So one thing I need to find is Q minus P and PX and QI. These terms are coming everywhere. So let's first find P minus Q. P minus Q here is going to be 90. Essentially Q minus P. So Q minus P here is equal to 90. And then I will find PX. PX is going to be 10,000 here and QY will be 1000. So PX minus QY is giving me 9000. Now you can clearly see if you divide this particular value, you are going to get 1 by 100. And if you multiply that by 100, you are going to get one year. That means what this first option is perfectly all right. Here I'm getting the time to be one year. That's what I wanted. Because in my situation, if these are the interest and these are the principal, the value should be equal after a year. The value should be equal after a year. So that's what I've simply done. We can easily find the answer without wasting any time. A option is perfectly all right. No other answer is going to be right. Question of 49 now. This particular question of 49 says, a man is investing a sum of money at compound interest. It amounted to rupees 2420 in two years and rupees 2662 in three years. So you have to find the sum. Easy question can be done very easily if you just put little attention to it. What answers are not possible? These two options are not possible. Why? Because after interest, the amounts are becoming 2420 and 2662. So principal will be or the sum should be less than 2420. These two options are not possible. Now you are left with only two options. And out of these two options, you have to find what is the right answer. 
if you have little common sense you can even directly mark 2000 from here why so because you can clearly see here the change in one year clearly is approximately 242 so in previous two years change that is going to happen will not be of that range that it makes 1000 because that means decreasing is by 1420 you're not going to get 1420 to be interest of two years if for one year interest you can calculate here it is going to be 242 even in the previous year it will be less than 242 in the previous year it will be even less than 242 you cannot get 1000 your answer will be even 2000 only that is the only possible answer if you go by option even here then you can mark but still let me tell you something otherwise you will say every question is being done like that Kuch time ke se bhi ga exam mein, right you want to spend some time in the exam let's see how you can do by this little longer method which will be very shorter than what others do so let's see that out 2420 is the amount here 266 is the amount here you can clearly see here that this particular value is 242 which is clearly 10 percent means interest is 10 percent that's what you can easily calculate now you can see that in previous two years when both are increasing by 10% and 10%, the cumulative increase for 10% twice is 21%. Now you can say 121% of the principal or sum will be 2420. So 100% will be clearly equal to 2000. I'm just telling you unnecessarily longer method. Although the answer was obtained previously itself without doing anything. Anyways, let's go at Question number 1150. Question number 1150 says that a sum of money is becoming 4000 in two years and 5500 in four years six months it's simple interest and rate of interest is same so we have to find what is the rate of simple interest a very easy question let's understand what it talks about so there is certain money and that money is actually becoming 4000 in two years so that's what is given and then it says the same money in further two years six months because overall it is talking about in four years six months it is becoming 5500 that means after this two years six months it is becoming 5500 i'm writing this 5500 now clearly what what is being asked is the rate percentage the only thing is that in simple interest the rate percent is same that does not change so let's find out one year interest and then we'll calculate what the rate percentage so you can clearly see that over a period of 2.5 years 2.5 years this interest earned is how much 1500 and also it is known that in case of simple interest amount of interest every year is same in compound interest it changes in simple interest it remains same every year so you can divide then and find out what is the interest of one year you will find one year interest from this case will be 600 so interest for one year you can easily obtain to be 600 here you will get it to be 1200 then for two years 4000 minus 1200 will be 2800 that became your simple interest i mean principal or sum that was put at simple interest 2800 then you have to find actually that one year interest which is 600 is what percentage of 2800 because first year interest is what percentage of sum will give you rate of simple interest so it is going to be 6 by 28 in terms of fractions or you can say it is going to be 3 by 14 once you get 3 by 14 you want to find the percentage so percentage will be 300 by 14 you can just simply think about this as 150 by 7 then you can simply simplify it 21 times will be 147 3 will be left 21 3 by 7 percentage will be the answer but anyways you should not be confused even if you know the equivalent of 1 by 14 in terms of percentage that will also be really helpful okay you can easily do that way 1 by 14 in terms of fractions this is the fractions in terms of percentage we write it as 7 1 by 7 percent now you can multiply by 3 you will get 21 directly from here and 3 by 7 you can easily do that as well because 3 by 14 can be easily calculated that way thank you all for watching these video lessons hope you are being helped using these video lessons thank you all